Hi, my name is Joe Villareale from Hampton Watercraft. Um, here today to show you a little bit about what to do with your wave runner after you're done using it for the day. I get asked a question a lot of times, how do I flush out my wave runner? Um, we also deal with some service issues from people who flush it out wrong. So I'm going to show you what I would do if this was my wave runner uh, when I was done using it and got it up onto a dock. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do is make sure it's uh, safely secured to the dock. Uh, you can see here we're using a jet dock system and it does have a winch that locks the wave runner on so it can't slide back on. Take off the engine cover. Usually leave it right there on the side. I'm going to grab my garden hose. It's a good idea on the garden hose to get an on-off uh, an on-off safety valve here. So that way you don't have to go run back and forth to the hose picket to turn the water on. The flush adapter on a wave runner, on a Yamaha wave runner, is located on this particular unit. Uh, is located right here on the top of the engine compartment. It has a safety cap. You're going to take off that safety cap. You're going to take your flush adapter, push in and twist so that it's locked. Once it's locked on, you're ready to go. You always want to start the wave runner first before you turn the water on. You do not want water running into this motor without the motor running. That can cause the water to flow backwards and do damage to the engine and the valves in the motor. So the first thing I'm going to do is start her up. <coughs> Let it idle. You know it's going to run. And you just turn the valve on and let the water run. We're going to let it run like this for somewhere between three and five minutes. You should see water start to come out the side here. That tells you that the water is circulating through the motor. While it's idling, you're going to want to give it a couple of hits of throttle. That gets the water into all the small water passages in the motor and makes sure that the water is circulating correctly through the motor. Once you've reached your three to five minutes of running time, you're then going to want to shut the water off. Again, you can do that just by shutting your valve off. You're going to let it run for another couple of seconds. Also give it a couple of hits of throttle. You want to get any of that leftover water out of the motor, and then you're safe to shut it down. You don't want to leave water in that exhaust um, once it's on the dock, because as the dock would be moving around, that water could slosh back and forth in the exhaust and it'll actually do the same thing as, as running it would be without the engine running. That water could end up going backwards into the motor, uh, so that's why you give it a couple of extra hits of throttle uh, when you're done flushing. And you can just take off your garden hose just by pushing and untwisting. That little black cap, you're going to want to screw that back on. Then you're going to take off your flush adapter. And we're going to rinse the wave runner down. You're going to rinse down the entire wave runner with fresh water. Rinse everything down. If you're using this wave runner in salt water, you're probably also going to want to rinse the engine down. I always rinse down my engine slightly, get any of the salt off the motor and the connections. You don't want to do it with too much power, just a slight rinse, so if there's any salt that did spray around on top of the motor, that you're going to rinse it all off. Okay, now that we've done that, we'll shut our water off. We're going to go to the back of the wave runner now. I'm going to unscrew the drain plugs to let off any of that water that we left in there. Drain plugs are located right in the back on the bottom. I'm going to unscrew those. Let any water drain out that is draining out. Once that's done, you're going to screw those back in. Don't wait till later to do those because obviously you don't want to forget. So tighten those back up. Then we're going to take a rag or a chamois. I'm using a chamois today, but you can use a sponge, whatever's necessary. And you're going to wipe down the motor, some of the water, any of the leftover water inside the engine compartment that you didn't drain out the drain plugs. You just simply sponge that out and wipe it all down. After you've done a thorough enough job with that, your last step 
is to spray down the engine with protective silicone spray. Again, all of this that I'm showing you is for use in salt water, um, and that's all we have around here. We're located on Eastern Long Island in New York. And you spray down everything in the engine compartment. Don't be afraid, silicone can't hurt anything. Put a nice protective coating on everything. You should do that after every time you use the wave runner. Um, that will make sure that over time your wave runner will look as new as it did uh, the first day you brought it home. Again, we're Hampton Watercraft and Marine. We're located in West Hampton Beach in Hampton Bays, Eastern Long Island, New York. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always reach us at HamptonWatercraft.com or on our phone at 631-288-2900. Thanks for your time.